who do you trust? How do you know? By how they appear? What they do? Maggie, welcome on the Alternative Cinema Show. Thank you. Maggie, your career uh, began in full swing after playing uh, this, in The Secretary. And from there on, your name became kind of synonymous with independent cinema. But then you kind of moved on into the big Hollywood uh, mainstream movies. Uh, and that, I, I think, uh, culminated in playing a major role in one of the biggest blockbusters in Hollywood, Batman. Could you shed light on the experience on, or your journey, your professional journey in, in cinema and film? Well, I'm not sure that's a totally accurate sort of description of the way it's gone. In a way, I feel like it's always gone back and forth. There's been sort of really little, tiny independent movies really mixed with bigger studio films uh, sort of all the way through. Um, and I try to work in a sort of similar way despite the size of the project. Although I find it easier to work when I don't stop. You know, sometimes a big movie, you'll go in for like a week or two and then you'll have a week off or, you know, shoot one scene all day and you'll have a lot of time off because they have the space and the money to light it and it takes a long time to light the scene. Whereas in an independent movie or something like The Honorable Woman, you're just going as fast as you can because you're just trying to get as much in as you can because you don't have the time and you don't have the money. And I work better moving quickly and not stopping. I prefer it. Um, you know, but there's also something nice on a big movie, on, on something like The Dark Knight, where nobody who's the head of a department is just learning their job. Because sometimes you work on a tiny movie and people are learning as they're going, because that's how it is. On The Dark Knight, everyone was an expert. And that's really lovely, too. You are known for your um, activities, social and political. And I, I would presume that you would be looking for something uh, with substance. Where do you find uh, a better medium to do that? Is it the mainstream Hollywood or the independent movies? Or does that impact your choices? To be honest, the place where I feel like I, find I have found that now really is in television. What I think at the moment is, it's true, big studio movies, as far as I can tell, with some exceptions, of course, um, are trying to appeal to many, many, many people. And when you're doing that, I think you have to sacrifice some subtlety. Not always, but a lot of the time. And then the independent movies, it's just so hard to get them made. And then once you get them made, it's so hard to get them seen. You know, when I first started making movies, like you could get someone to give you a million dollars, two million dollars, if you had a good script, you could make a movie and there was an infrastructure in place to get it distributed. And it doesn't feel that way anymore feels much more difficult. Of course, if you make something on television and there's the space on television and the interest to do something novelistic, complicated, with a different rhythm than we're used to, that deals with real, subtle, complicated, strange, sometimes dark, perverse things that real human beings are going through. I mean, those are all the things that appeal to me. You can do that on television and millions of people will see it. You know, so it's like, to me, I'm kind of like a convert now. This is fascinating. So. Television has become the alternative to film, to cinema, to um, deal with substance drama. Uh, and that brings me to the other question. So how come you waited that long to get into television? Because Honorable Norman is your first television project. You know, I think I might have had a sense of, oh no, television isn't as good for a while, and I was wrong. And the truth is, is when I got this script, I didn't even think about it as a television script. I just thought of it as, um, I just got the script and started reading it and it was so excellent. And it was so much more exciting to me than what I had been reading in film. So what attracted you to play the role of Nessa Stein in The Honorable Woman? And why is she honorable? Well, I think the series kind of asks a lot of questions about what that word means or good you know good is a complicated thing mm -hmm. and I think that when the series begins Nessa thinks being honorable and being good is about being pure uncompromised and as it 
as the series goes on and deepens, um, it gets more and more complicated what it means to her to do good and to be honorable. I think in some ways it should have a question mark at the end, the honorable woman question mark. No. You are known for your um, activities, social and political. And I recall you are one of the few who daringly stood up after September 11 and, and uh, challenged America to question its, its position in the world. And I presume you have your opinion about the Middle East conflict. When you got into this role, how did your opinion um, affected your performance or uh, contributed to your work on this uh, series? I think that my political feelings about that part of the world are really led by an attempt at compassion, an interest in compassion, an interest in reconciliation, and I think that Nessa has the same interest. I feel, and I know that there are many people who disagree with me on this, but that taking a hard and fast position on what's happening in that part of the world, uh, I find very difficult. I find it sort of falls between my fingers. And I feel like this piece that we made, somehow, because it isn't purely intellectual, because it is a piece of art, says something that I believe about that part of the world that I can't articulate in five sentences, that I can't write in an essay for you either. But the piece says it, and it's bigger than me, but that I think the show says. Something you notice about this particular intractable uh, problem is that um, you have different perspectives from different countries and different places. I wanted to concentrate on one scene, the rape scene. It's a very difficult uh, scene to watch. And I guess from a Palestinian perspective, say, why are we shown as the rapist? Why the Palestinian was presented as the rapist? Um, is it more palatable to see a Palestinian raping than an Israeli? Here's what I think. I think you have to watch all eight episodes. I think you really do. Because, I mean, I don't know how much to give away, but basically, fundamentally, one very important piece of this puzzle is that Nessa Stein's father was a Zionist gunrunner who killed thousands of people. That's who she comes from. That's what she's inherited. And that's what she's coming into the world with. But she, she supports the Palestinians. She's a philanthropist. She's Absolutely. A... She's subverting what her father was doing. She, she's, she's doing everything she can to promote equality, to... Um, in the beginning, it's, it's financial inequality that she's working toward, but also educational and in every way, and reconciliation. But you have to watch it all. It does swing, and I think that you have to trust us that our intention is equality and compassion. And I mean, I think you have to watch it all. I do. I believe that. Please trust me and watch it all. All right, Maggie, thanks a lot. Okay.